All right, so I'm going to be covering different passages of Scripture tonight, talking all about sort of why we fall, why does God allow us to go through trials, how do those trials push us forward in our growth as people and our growth as Christians. But I'm just going to open us up in a word of prayer, so bow your heads. Father, I thank you for this evening. Lord, I thank you just for the blessing of being back here, of being physically present with everyone here. Lord, I know there's a lot of people who aren't here with various spring breaks and stuff. I just pray for their safety, and I pray that you would continue to bring us all back together, Lord, that you would continue to provide avenues for us to meet, for us to break out of this abnormal time we've been living in, Lord. And I just pray that tonight, that you would speak through me, that you'd give everyone here, including myself, ears to hear, Lord, and that we would grow in our knowledge, our love for you, and our desire to grow as human beings. In your son's name we pray, amen. All right, why do we fall? Why do we fall? Someone raise their hand, tell me. (laughs) Thank you, Eric. Why do we go through hard times in this life? Ben. Bingo. Bingo. Because we're sinful. But tonight we're going to be looking at why specifically do we as Christians fall? Why does God allow us, those of us who have been redeemed, to continue to deal with the struggles of sin? So our main question for tonight is why do we fall? We're going to look at various passages of scripture. We're going to look at some writing. We're also going to look at a few movie clips to see how the world tells us what the world tells us about why we fall. So this first one is from Batman Begins. Oh. All right, so to give you some background as we figure out the sound, in this clip, Bruce Wayne, a.k.a. Batman, has fallen. The villains have overtaken his city. He has completely failed in his mission to make Gotham a better place. They've destroyed his mansion, and we've come to a point where Bruce just doesn't understand what he's supposed to do anymore. He doesn't understand why he has lost everything. So he and his butler, Alfred, get in this elevator. All right, so in that clip, Alfred says, we fall down so we learn to pick ourselves back up. This is one of the ways the world addresses why we fall, why we go through hard times, so that you can learn to become tougher, so you can learn to pick yourself back up. And while that does have certain truth to it, we're going to look at how that's not a complete answer. That's not satisfying, and ultimately it's not true. So we need to first examine the fact that we're going to go through trials as Christians and why we're going to go through trials. So we know that trials are coming. And the first place we see this, we can see this, we're going to look at a passage from the Bible here in a second, but I wanted to show you this quote from the Count of Monte Cristo, famous book and movie. And the Count himself has gone through various struggles throughout his life and He tells one of his friends at a dinner party, one of his friends who's been struggling with the fact that he's going through struggles. He's looking for encouragement. He's looking for a reason to continue going. And the Count says, life is a storm, my young friend. You will bask in the sunlight one moment and be shattered on the rocks the next. What makes you a man is what you do when the storm comes. You must look into the storm and shout as you did in Rome, do your worst for I will do mine. 
then the fates will know you as we know you. So in this quote, the count is acknowledging, yes, you're going to go through trials. You're going to go through good times and bad times. It's how you respond to those trials that matters. James echoes this in James 1, 2 through 4, where he, can sa- he says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Notice James just assumes that we're going to go through trials. He doesn't argue. He doesn't say, no, you won't experience them. He takes it as a fact. You will go through trials in this life. Some of you have gone through hard stuff in your lives, harder than probably most people in this room could imagine going through. Some of you have had a pretty nice life so far. You might have had a bad grade. You might have gotten injured one time. But you really haven't faced a real trial, a trial that shakes you to your core, that makes you question who you are and what you believe, that makes you question what the world is really like and how do we respond to it. But that trial will come. We are assured that trials have their place here by James and by the world. So we must be prepared to face those trials. Again, if we look back at James, he says, the testing of your faith produces perseverance. The goal of going through trials is to produce perseverance in us, to produce the ability to go through a trial and thrive. So we see ultimately trials are an opportunity. What are they an opportunity for though? They're an opportunity to be refined. If we look at Zechariah 13, 9, the prophet says, and I will put this third into the fire and refine them as one refined silver and test them as gold is tested. They will call upon my name and I will answer them. I will say, they are my people and they will say, the Lord is my God. If you guys don't know, refining is a process by which silversmiths, goldsmiths would remove imperfections from gold. Essentially, they'd melt something that was gold down and go into this huge pot, and they'd heat it up really, really hot. So all the dirt, all the impurities would float to the top. They would ladle that out, then heat it up again. And they would repeat this process over and over and over again until they got pure gold or pure silver. That is what God's comparing us going through trials to. He's saying, I'm going to have them go through trials so that they will be refined like gold, so that their impurities and imperfections will be worked out and they will become pure. 1 Peter 1.7 says, These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Peter, knowing the Old Testament, is probably very familiar with Zechariah, hinting back to it and saying, yes, God said he would refine us like gold, but there's a difference. Gold and silver perish. Ultimately, they're nothing. God is refining us to something far greater than gold and silver. He's refining us to be more and more like him for eternity. So, Trials are an opportunity to be refined. They make us into something better. They make us into something more pure. They also create perseverance in us. Again, the ability to overcome future obstacles. If you go one through one bad thing and learn lessons from it, it's easier to then the next time you're confronted with that same thing, know how to overcome it. Think about a race. If you're running a race, the first time you ever run a race, you're probably going to have some struggle. You're probably not going to know when exactly to use all your speed, when exactly to use all your stamina, and when to back off and pace yourself. Keep running, however, you get more and more experience, you start to become a better runner. You know how fast you need to begin based on the length of the distance you're running. You know when to use your energy and when to save your energy. 
It's the same thing in life. Trials allow us to go through them repeatedly and understand, okay, here's how I face this trial. Here's how I deal with this particular bad thing in my life. They also prepare us for future life. I'm just going to use the period of time we've been living through. I don't know what God is going to use everything that we've gone through in the last year for. But I do know that he's using it to prepare us for something to come. He's teaching us lessons we might not even recognize now so that one day we can better react to a future situation. We can better react to someone else when they're hurting. One of the prime ways that God allows us to go through trials, one of the reasons he allows us to go through trials, is so that we can help those around us. I'll give you an example of my own life. Many of you know my testimony, but I was bullied pretty hard end of middle school, beginning of high school. At the time, I didn't understand why I was going through it. I didn't understand why God was letting me experience those things. But God used those hard times for me to have a heart for people who don't always fit in. For me to have a heart for middle schoolers and high schoolers. Essentially, the lessons God taught me going through that period of my life directly led to me mentoring junior high kids when I was in high school, which directly led me to be an RA in college, someone who's over a hall of people, which directly led me into teaching. God prepared me back then through the trials that I walked through to be where I am today. I would never have imagined that back then. But that's just a small example of how God will use big things and small things in your life that push against you, that put you in a bad place, to help you grow in perseverance and prepare you for the future. The last way that God really uses trials is to teach us and remind us that we cannot find our ultimate hope in ourselves. Yes, trials can help us realize that we need to be able to pull ourselves back up, but we can't rely on that. There are going to be trials you guys go through that you simply cannot go through on your own. You can't even go through fully with a friend, a family member. The only way you can really get through some of these trials, a lot of these trials, is by relying on God, by understanding that he is the one who has all power, he is the one who is all-knowing, and he has had a plan since before you were born of every little thing that's going to happen in your life and everywhere that a trial will take you. A huge part of trials is helping us understand we can't do this on our own. They drive us to our knees They make us rely on God. That is why God allows us to go through trials. So why do we fall? We fall because God is preparing us for what is coming. We fall so that we rely more on him. So we avoid the pride that is so easy in our own hearts to think when we're experiencing good times that we are controlling our lives, that we are doing everything right. Guys, many of you have grown up in good Christian homes, in middle class to high middle class, in the middle of Mason, Ohio, and the surrounding areas. Most of you have had a pretty easy life. That's not gonna last, because we live in a broken world, and God might God might bless you with what the world would call an extremely good life here on earth. Or he might not. Regardless, you will go through trials. You will experience the ugliness that is this fallen world. And if you try to rely on yourself, you're not going to make it through this world. 
I want to see you guys become people who are the most reliant on God. I want to see you guys be people who trust in him no matter what. Because that's what truly matters, guys. I don't want you guys to get to the end of your life and be like, what did I do? Where is my hope? What happens next? I want you guys to be growing and learning even now that your hope and your reliance has to be on God. We can't just let God drag us along and oftentimes if we just say, okay, God, you've got this. I'm not going to do anything. You take away this struggle and we don't put the work in, we're not going to get through that trial very well. We're not going to learn everything we need to learn. And likewise, we can't do it on our own. We can't just pick ourselves up off our knees and go through every trial and rely on our own strength. Ultimately, God is working us to a place where we experience eternal life with him. And that is far more beautiful, far more perfect than this world can ever be. Rejecting the things of this world, whether they be things that the world says are good and are not, or whether they be fine things in and of themselves, unless they take the place of God. If we put all our time and resources into those things and ignore the eternal, we might have a good 30, 40, 50 years here, but we're not going to enjoy the eternity that comes after. Hebrews 11, 32 through 40 comes in a part of the Bible known as the Hall of Faith, where the writer of Hebrews goes through and lists all these people throughout Israel's history and talks about the faith they had. And one of the unique things, one of the special things about Hebrews 11 is every single man and woman mentioned has some great sin in their life had some area throughout the Old Testament where we see that they were not a perfect person. But they had what really matters. They had faith and hope in something bigger. So he gets to the end of the passage and he says, What more shall I say? I don't have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us they would be made perfect. This is most Christians throughout the years. Most of God's people have not had amazing lives according to the world. The Old Testament Israelites were hated by the people around them. Jesus says that we will be hated by the world around us. They went through terrible things, but they are commended, they are reminded or remembered because of the faith that they had because they acted like ultimately their reward wasn't here. They knew it was in heaven and they lived that way. That's what trials produce in us, that kind of perseverance. I don't need to tell you guys that Western culture is in decline. And I don't say that to scare you, but if you look at our country and Europe and a lot of the surrounding countries, Our society is in a much more worldly and fallen place than it was 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. 
And we're called as Christians to redeem that, but we also need to be be prepared for more persecution. We're seeing it. Some of you guys probably see it in your schools. The world doesn't like us. So one of the ways that we can combat that is by relying on God and moving through these trials. I'm going to end with a little clip from Rocky Balboa in which Rocky tells his son what it means to actually go through life, to go through the hardships and how he should respond to it. And I think it's pretty solid advice for us as believers too. I'd hold you up to say to your mother, this kid's going to be the best kid in the world. This kid's going to be somebody better than anybody I ever knew. And you grew up good and wonderful. It was great just watching every day. It was like a privilege. And the time come for you to be your own man and take on the world, and you did. But somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, You started looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you gotta be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you wanna be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. I'm always going to love you no matter what, no matter what happens. You're my son, you're my blood. You're the best thing in my life. But until you start believing in yourself, you ain't going to have a life. Don't forget to visit your mother. All right. Guys, that's where we're at. The world is going to hit us. The world is going to knock us down. You can either give up and try and rely on yourself to get through hard times, or you can trust in Christ and work to learn from the trials you go through. Be refined by the trials you go through. Be refined by the hardships that come your way, that have come your way, that will come your way. And let's grow into people who not only know the gospel, but live it out. Who not only know that hard times will come, but know how to get through them. Who can encourage those around us who we see going through similar things that we might have already experienced and build them up. Ultimately, guys, it comes down to two things. Your reliance on God and your willingness to go through hard times, learn the lessons, and keep moving forward. Let's pray. Father, I thank you again for this evening and for everyone here in this room, Lord. I pray that you would give us perseverance. I pray that you would be with each and every one of the individuals in this room, Lord. You know what each and every one of us has gone through. You know what we will go through in this lifetime. I pray that you would give everyone in this room the strength to persevere through hard times. I pray that everyone in this room would be driven in hard times right to you instead of trying to rely only on themselves. I pray that everyone in this room Lord, that you would give them the endurance, the perseverance, and the willingness to learn from hard times, and that you would ultimately refine us and let us be known as a generation who truly knew you, who truly loved you, 
and who truly understood how to make it through the trials that we face in this world. In your son's name we pray. Amen.